Hello, my awesome and amazing Scorpios. It's Mel with Blue Scorpion Tarot here to bring you another general collective reading. If you are a Scorpio uh, that was born on October 31st, then this special reading is for you. Happy birthday to all of the Scorpios that celebrated on October 31st. I sincerely hope that your birthday was as magical as you are. And of course, a lot of you celebrating on my favorite holiday out of the year, Halloween. <laughs> so again, from a few weeks back, I hope you had a great day and you made the most of it. So calling upon the trusted ancestors of my Scorpios born on October 31st to bring in the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth through the power of the numbers. And so it is. Power of number five, power of number seven, and power of number six. Okay. So adding up the numbers, we've got five and seven, that's 12. 12 and six is 18. Okay. 18 represents the moon card. Okay. You may feel that somebody's being shady with you, Scorpio. Um, you could have been doing some manifestation work with your moon cycles for some of you who are into that. Um, you could be going through a dark night of the soul right now, or you could be dealing straight up with a Cancerian. Some of you may also be dealing with a Taurus or a Gemini born in the month of May. You could also be dealing with a Cancer or a Leo born in the month of July. You could also be dealing with a Gemini or a Cancer born in the month of June. However, you may also be dealing with a Leo or a Virgo born in the month of August, possibly an Aquarius or a Capricorn born in the month of January. Could be dealing with another Scorpio, maybe possibly an Aries, picking up on strong Aquarius energy again through the number 17 and or possibly could be dealing again with a Capricorn, strong Capricorn energy coming in through the number 15. Some of you Scorpios born on October 31st, you could have been born in the year of either 1961, 1965, 1967, or 1968. You could have been born in 1951, 1956, 1957, or possibly 1958 for my more mature audience. Could have also been born in 1971, 1975, 1976 or possibly 1978 could have also been born in 1981 1985 1986 or possibly even 1987 for some of you so going to the power of number 18 for my scorpios born on october 31st one two three four five six eight one two three four five six eight one two Three, four, Ooh, five. You got some energy flying around. I was on the power of number five. We got the Ace of Cups, something about your romantic life. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Trusted ancestors of my Scorpios born on October 31st. What is the overall general collective message, please? What do they need to know? Ooh, the Knight of Cups. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, you could be dealing with. Somebody wants to head in your direction. Give some kind of romantic proposal or gesture. Somebody may want to take you out, get to know you. This can also talk about a new soulmate. The Four of Swords. Somebody may want to take a vacation with you, maybe take a short time out, maybe a sabbatical. Or Spirit could also be saying, hey, you know, it's time to get on that horse, Scorpio. Go take a trip. You know, you've been working really hard, okay? Been working really hard, putting your nose to the grindstone. You need some time out for yourself. However, with the Eight of Pentacles, I can look at this on a romantic level that somebody here is going to come back and either put in more effort into the connection or this new soulmate is going to show you 
through action. And their action is going to match up with their words that they're serious about you. Okay, let's go into um, Kipper deck. Family room. This person may convey that they want to have a family with you. You could have celebrated with your family members for your birthday. This person, I feel, may want to talk. We got the main person, main male, main female, main person on the bottom of the deck. This person may want to talk to you about the future. Ooh, man, oh man, their energy's all over the place. Whoever this person is, cards, you know, when cards are flying, something's up. Great fortune. This is Lady Fortuna energy right here. I feel like this is a new soulmate. You may still have some trust issues going on, Scorpio, about your romantic life, you know. Probably been through mountains and molehills and been through hell and back when it comes to your romantic life, but I feel like spirit here does not want you to give up, okay? Um, there's somebody coming in that I feel is very genuine and only, and the only reason why I say that is because we saw the eight of pentacles on the bottom of the deck. Okay. So let's go into romance angels cards here. Something here on the bottom of the deck, forgiving and learning. As you release and heal the past, you experience more love in your present moment. So this could be about working in on your self-concept, your value, your worth, Scorpio, when it comes to either a specific person or this is just about your romantic life in general. Like I said, if you had trust issues, maybe you're not trusting a situation, maybe you're not trusting somebody's advances, maybe there is a new person already in the mix of your energy and you could still be having doubts or questioning certain things, okay? Um, just because of the past pain, the past hurt. We all have trust issues in some way, shape, or form. But, you know, what do we do? We just have to put our best foot forward. We can't over-project our energy or think... When it comes to a new person, we do not want to think too far off in the future. Basically, when a new person is coming into your life or you meet somebody new, all you're doing is being in observation, and that's how it should be. Just be in observation. You don't have to keep questioning yourself like, oh my God, is this the one? Is this the one? I had a really great date. Maybe he is the one. Maybe she is the one. When we start thinking that way, we lose touch of the present moment and the experience of being around that person, okay? So when it comes to somebody new, stay present, okay? Past life, you two have known each other before. So when this person comes in, you're going to feel like you have been through many lifetimes with this person, okay? They're just going to have a sense of comfortability that they're going to exude, that you're going to feel Okay, however, I'm not going to disregard the fact that, yep, mm -hmm, this could be a person from the past. Yep, could be a person from the act, you know, releasing your ex, person from the past. <clears throat> the time has come to clear your energy. So, a couple variable messages. If you don't want your ex back, that's fine. Or whoever was the last potential lover, suitor, whatever that you thought could have been the one, Okay. So before you put yourself back out there again, clear your energy, save your space, 
take spiritual cleansing showers, spiritual baths, okay? Keep your vibrational frequency high. Work in more on your heart chakra. Listen to binaural beat frequencies and or guided meditations for that heart chakra to keep it strong, to keep that energy healthy so that you can navigate with your emotions, but your emotions being grounded, okay? And not letting your emotions override your logic either, okay? Children, this person may already have children. Maybe you already have children with this person. It says your love life is being affected by children, okay? Some of you guys may be waiting for child support payments or could be going through custody battles, things like that. However, I'm feeling this is more new energy versus necessarily old energy, but yeah, sure. The past could come back. Engagement. Somebody here. This is why I feel like this is new. Look at how beautiful that is. Engagement with the Great Fortune card. This feels to me, it says your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. So what I'm feeling here is that once you really fully clear your energy, you know your value, your worth, your self-concept, and keep, it's not, listen, you guys, it's not we clear and cleanse our energy and think that, oh, I'm fine now, I'm good now. No, when we keep clearing and cleansing our energy, that doesn't mean that we don't stop learning or that we just cleanse ourselves once and then all of a sudden life is great. No, it's a habitual habit. Uh, we have to always, because if you are an empath, and as intuitive as you are, Scorpio, you do absorb people's energy. And so you have to constantly clear, 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 clear. Keep clearing your energy so that you can keep receiving great love in your life. And the universe is only going to bring the right people, the right scenarios, the right situations. Okay. Some of you may go through an experience where you release somebody from the past. You could already be in a very healthy, committed partnership, and they may try to come in. They may try to come in and persuade you and say, like, no, we need to be together. It's our fate. It's our destiny. Okay? But you may be more content. You could already be engaged right now for some of you. If not, there's an engagement in the future. So... And this person from past tense, for some of you guys, they could be releasing a third party out of their energetic force field, laying things to rest, saying goodbye, adios, putting an end to certain things, coming forward. You know, they may want to convey that they see the future or like to combine families together, etc. Maybe they see you being the mother of their children. That's one thing, but there is, there is commitment. Okay. So the only blockage in truth that I'm seeing here is a question of, okay, have you guys fully released the past? You may not forget everything that has happened to you in the past. Okay. However, it's a matter of staying present, understanding where your energy is at on a daily basis. You know, you could do the one through 10 scale method, you know, like, how are you feeling today when you wake up? Are you at a four? Are you at a zero? Are you at a 10? Are you in between? You don't know. Okay. Write it down because your, your emotions, yes, can help guide you to help you to understand your vibrational frequency, you want your, if you're gonna draw in a new person, you gotta get it as high as possible. If you can get it past a level 10, that's great, okay? But also too, picking and choosing wisely new places to put your energy into in order to meet better people, higher quality. Online dating is a very fickle thing, okay? You don't know what you're going to get, okay? So if you've tried the online dating thing and it's not really gelling with your energy, start looking in your local community for events that could be happening, you know, in and around your town. Um, 
to be able to put your energy out there feeling good. Make sure that you're not going to events by yourself. Team up with a good friend. Try to refrain. I'm not anti-liquor, but really think about the energy of the bar, okay? The bar can hold a lot of positive and also very highly negative energy because a lot of times people go to the bar to release their problems and those bars never technically, those bars never get saged out when you think about it. Bars do not get saged out. <laughs> you know, you know, to clear and cleanse the energy of the bar. You Because remember, when sound and emotions, everything is energy. Your walls are energy. So think about a bar. The bar is absorbing. The walls of a bar are absorbing a lot of toxicity. Mm -hmm. especially if the bars are very low lit and dark and not a lot of good lighting in there, that can bring on a lot of heavy emotion as well. So again, pick and choose wisely where you're choosing to put your energy in what environment in order to meet somebody. So, and keep leveling up. You know, if you want somebody who is leveled up, make sure you are leveled up as well. You may not have all the money in the world, Scorpio, but if you are an ambitious person, only hang around ambitious people. You can meet your future spouse that is an entrepreneur and your ideals, your goals, your mindset, you know, you, you think you coordinate on the same level, the same frequency. You know what I mean? But there is a future engagement here. So understanding what quality of a person are you looking for and making sure that this person in truth that they really do want children that they really do want to be married and I feel like this person in the knight of cups it's a yes but this can also talk about manifestation work too Manifesting at the right vibrational frequency. If you're not feeling good about yourself, Scorpio, or where you emotionally stand right now, it's going to be very difficult to manifest or think that the right person for you could ever come in your awareness. That's why I always recommend, like one of my methods that I preach to um, my clients is, you know, get yourself a notebook, start designing and developing your soulmate avatar. Okay, while you have this time to yourself, especially if you're single, you know, you could be thinking far too much about the past, the people that have hurt you, you got to release that because if you're going to manifest and go into a new vibrational frequency about a new soulmate, start from head to toe. What does this person look like? What are their values? What are their morals, ethics? And then you have to get specific. What kind of family do they come from? You just don't want to say, oh, they come from a good family. What makes that family that they come from good? Who, what, where, why, when, and how? Does this person have siblings? Do they have parents or no parents? You know what I mean? What kind of job do they have? What kind of car do they drive? How do they present themselves? Are they cool, calm, casual, laid back? Do they wear blue jeans all the time? Um, you know, do they dress up for events? Do they groom themselves well? Put that into play on your soulmate avatar list, okay? You are the one that is, and the reason why it's better to write it down is because in your mindset, it helps to see from pen to paper, writing it down, it helps you to visualize 10 times greater. Don't just do it on your computer. When you have notes, nothing's powerful than the pen, okay? The pen is mightier than the sword. So when you see your written statements about what this person, their attributes, all of that, it will, and when you see it on physical paper versus your laptop, because if you're a type of person that gets distracted, you're not going to go to your laptop. Because you're more than likely, some of you guys are going to be scrolling on your phones, getting caught up with social media, text messages, phone calls. Like, if you have your soulmate avatar notebook in plain sight 
and you take the time five, 10 minutes out of your day and keep going over it, speak it out, keep adding to it. It does not have to be done in one day, but it will help raise your vibrational frequency and help you also to set standards with yourself so that you get to this level of commitment that you've been seeking. Okay. So spirit saying you got the green light to release somebody from the past that did not work out. It could very well be true that a different person from the past could be coming in your direction. It could be one in the same person. You may tell this person, no, I'm not taking you back. I'm manifesting for a new soulmate, whatever. Um, or this person, new person coming in is going to feel like you've known them many lifetimes. That's going to want the same things as you that may have children or on your soulmate avatar list. If you want them to have children, write it down. If you don't want them to have children, write it down. Okay. Right now, if you are in a waiting phase and you don't know where your love life's going, start designing it out on paper. If it helps you to build a journal uh, where you cut out pictures of the things that you want to experience. It's, it's pretty much like a vision board, but I call it the vision book. Okay. So if that helps you to shift your energy frequency in order for whoever this Knight of Cups is to come in your direction. Okay. They could come to you during a water sign season. We still have a few days left of Scorpio season, so nothing is impossible, but some of you guys will be engaged and you can even put on your soulmate avatar, like what month do you want to meet this person? Be realistic. Sure. You could have wanted your romantic life be up and running as of yesterday, but if you're in the same position right now, feeling down and out, it's going to be very difficult for you to manifest anything. You have to get your energy straightened up and know your value, know your worth, that you deserve to have somebody in your life that is stable, that is has healthy thoughts. They're not in and out. They're not, you know, meaning inconsistent. When, put a time frame on it. You could work with your trusted answer say, hey, I would be comfortable, write it down, I would be comfortable meeting this person by dot, 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 Put a time frame on it because if you're busy with work and projects and goals right now, you may not have time just yet to meet somebody, but that doesn't mean you cannot um, start getting your soulmate avatar journal put together. Okay. Little by little, like I said, it does not have to be written down in one day, but this is a very fun, enthusiastic exercise that again will help expand your subconscious mind because remember, 95% of your thoughts come from your subconscious mind and they dictate your reality. So start creating a new reality in your subconscious mind. Make your subconscious mind your number one priority throughout the day. And because it is about your thoughts. It is about the information that you're consuming on a daily basis that is also triggering you. And as far as your vibrational frequency. Okay, so out with the old, in with the new. My awesome and amazing Scorpios born on October 31st. Again, I hope your birthday was just as magical as you are. And uh, if you'd like to book a personal reading with me and do it through the power of the numbers, you can hit me up at bluescorpiongifts at gmail.com and my amazing assistant, Victoria, will book you for that personal reading. But until next time, take care.